Hey guys, in this video, I'm very excited to showcase the BookBeam book tracker. It's definitely one of the more advanced tools and more sophisticated tools in our tool set. And I'll show you what it can do for you and how you can benefit from it. So here I've just listed out the main things that the book tracker uh, does for you. It tracks the best sellers rank for you over time. It shows you units sold estimates, shows you royalties generated estimates for any book be it, be it Kindle, be it, uh, you know, print or audio. It keeps track of reviews and ratings over time. And it will also notify you about when you get new reviews. So you don't have to keep going back to, you know, dozens of listings, trying to keep track of everything, you know, maybe checking the rankings and checking, oh, did I get a, did I get a new review or not? The book tracker can do all of this for you. And another big thing that it does is it tracks keyword ranking um, performance, but more in that shortly. So essentially the benefits of the book tracker and why you should actually care, you know, we all know nobody really cares about features. Everybody cares about the benefits. So here are the benefits. The book tracker will help you to save time and hassle of having to, as I mentioned, jump around, look at different listings and keep track of, keep track of things, especially when you, you know, when you get deeper into the, uh, into self-publishing, it, it is more challenging to, uh, keep track of things. So that's definitely something that software can help us do. Next, you know, you can use it for, again, as I mentioned, for print books, for Kindle books, for audio books. All of them are, are, are great and it will work with all of them. Then again, it shows us the key data that we're really eager to um, know, data that we can use to improve our, uh, improve our books, data that we can use to understand uh, different niches. And obviously you can use this to track competitors' books, not just your own books, but I highly recommend that you also track books of competitors just to see how they're doing, uh, just to get a better feeling of a category or a niche that you are interested in. Anyway, that was my long-winded intro here. Let me actually show you the book tracker and let me show you how it works and, and what exactly it does. All right, guys, so let's say you are interested in tracking this book right here. And there's a couple of ways you can add it to the book tracker. The easiest one probably is, well, the two ways are, so either grab the ISBN 10 or the ASIN for Kindle books, or you can grab the URL, which is, I think it's, I just think the URL is a slightly easier option out of the two. And then let's go over to the book tracker tool and let me just paste in this URL that I just copied. It already knows that it's um, the .com marketplace. And then all I have to do is just select which format I'm interested in. And right here, I'm interested in the book format, not Kindle, not audio, book, which Amazon usually means by book, they mean uh, print. So there we go. This book has been added to our book tracker and we see a nice summary of the key data points. And note that I'm saying summary. There's, there's much more behind this. Um, what are we seeing? We're seeing the best sellers rank. Nice. Uh, we're seeing the trend. That's already getting better. I like this. We're seeing that, um, we're seeing that this book has been really jumping uh, in the past, uh, during the past week. The BSR has been really fluctuating, which is quite interesting. You know, maybe maybe that's due to just demand. That might be due to also, you know, how the the you know how the publisher has been running their ads. That also might have something to do with it. But it's, we're seeing that it's been fluctuating quite a bit. And then we also see the ratings. It, we see we're seeing it has 4.5 stars, which is very good. And we see how many ratings there are. There's 83. And then another thing here that we see is plus three. What does that mean? That means there are three new ratings. This is how Amazon terms it, ratings instead of reviews. So try not to get too confused there. So we see that there, so we see that there are three new ratings um, added to this book. And it's such a simple feature, but I think it, it's one of those things that really saves you a lot of hassle kind of monitoring how the review situation is going um, on in your listing on Amazon. But guys, as I mentioned, this is just the summary. This is just the tip of the iceberg. If we click anywhere on the book tracker section, click anywhere, what will happen is book tracker will expand uh, vertically and it will provide us with more in-depth uh, data, more in-depth information about this book. And what specifically does that mean? So first of all, it's going to just show us the BSR numbers. How has the bestsellers rank been trending over time? You, we see, we're seeing here that it has been, it was lower at the start of the month, at the start of these 30 days, and it trended up. 
Perhaps again, the publisher increased the ad spend, perhaps it was just demand in the market, but we see what's going on very clearly and transparently. And not only that, so it also shows us the estimated royalty. So we see how much this book, roughly how much this book has been generating for this publisher or for this, uh, for this author. So we see it's been generating $20 uh, on the medium end, uh, 18 or around 18, 17 on the lower end. And on the high end, it's been generating $25, roughly $25 per day. And how do we calculate this? We're using as many data points that help us to get to the real number, as close to the real number as we can. We're using our in-house estimates, first and foremost, to estimate how many sales this book is generating. And then obviously we use uh, price to calculate the royalties and not just the price now, we're using the price over this time period. So, you know, this publisher could have a price that was much lower uh, two weeks ago. It could have been $5 instead of $8.95 as it is now. So we're just using all the data points to make this data as accurate for you guys as it can be. And the last thing over here in this tab, you can also switch from bestsellers rank, from viewing bestsellers rank. You know, maybe you're not interested in BSR. You don't really know what, what it means. You don't really know the difference between 2,000 and 20,000. Other than that, 2,000 is selling much more copies. So for those of you guys who prefer uh, to look at estimated sales, we've also created the option to look straight at estimated units sold. So here we're seeing it's 18 to 23. In this day, on the higher end, it's 21 to 27, roughly, based on our knowledge and estimates. And so this just makes up for what Amazon does not uh, give us. Next, let's go over to the review history. So the review history, much like the name, I think, indicates, it just shows you how the reviews have been um, uh, developing over time. So first of all, we see how many reviews, or again, ratings, as Amazon has now called them how many overall ratings there are. So we see it was 75 at the start of two weeks. Actually, let's look at three months data instead. So here we see you know, a bunch of data. We see that three months ago, this book had only 28 ratings and we see how it has been slowly but steadily, slowly but surely been trending up over time. And now it's way up at 82 ratings. Um, the star rating, which is you know one to five stars, the average has been, uh, it has been quite steady at 4.7 and 4.8. It's just been going back and forth. Um, we can see that over here as well. All right, so next let's move on to keyword rankings. Keyword rankings are right here. I'll just click this and it's going to uh, navigate to this graph over here. So first let me explain, so what is keyword rank? So what a keyword ranking is, I would enter a keyword into the search bar right here. Let's remove this six to eight. And I would just look at how this book, which this book is in the rank for this specific search term. And obviously you can enter any search term you like. You can enter activity book, activity book for kids, books for kids, a word search, connect the dots, any of these keywords you can enter into the book tracker. And what the book tracker is going to do is it will track the performance for your book for each of the keywords of your choosing. So let me add a couple of keywords. Uh, let's do activity book for kids, activity book for kids ages six to eight. We can also do books for kids. Uh, we obviously the ranking is gonna be lower for that one. And then next we can do connect the dots, for example. I mean, this is a classic case of a, I guess you could call it a low content book. And here we see that the book tracker has already added the rankings for this, uh, for these search terms for this book. So we see it's number eight, activity book for kids, number one, activity book for kids, six to eight, and 50 plus for, for books for kids. What does 50 plus mean? Well, 50 plus just means that the book tracker was not able to find this um, the ranking of this book on any of the first uh, any of the first three pages so it's just saying 50 plus or in you know in more understandable terms it would just mean that this book is not really ranking for this term because let's face it if it's on page number four or more page number 10 for example it's not really ranking this term is not really going to be generating much uh, clicks or much much uh, sales for you 
Okay, so let's add a couple more books to the book tracker here. I've selected this book um, about gardening. Plus, track new again, enter the URL, books, start tracking. And again, here we have all of the data for this book. So here I'm going to actually use the Kindle book version of this book. You can again, you can copy the URL or I'm going to copy the ASIN. Control C, uh, plus track new, enter it here into this field. I'm just showing you, you know, alter an alternative method to add a book using the uh, ASIN. And we just tell the book tracker that it's a Kindle book and start tracking. And here the book tracker is going to add this book to the list as well. And just for fun, let's also add an audio book. Again, we'll grab the ASIN or the URL. Paste ASIN.com is, is what I'm interested in. Audiobook, start tracking. And there we go. We have data for this book as well. For the sake of you know, full transparency, uh, you won't always have uh, a full tracker of data immediately. We see here for this Kindle book, uh, the book tracker will need, to, uh, will need some time to pass for it to start showing data. That's due to some current uh, data challenges that in the future we aim to, aim to work around. But for now, you will need some time for the BSR graph to build, much like for the, for the keyword tracking as well. And so once again here for the keyword tracking, you don't have to constantly be going over to the store, constantly typing in keywords to see how your book is doing for those terms in terms of rankings and, and so on. And also if you're doing ads, you can see how your ads are impacting your rankings over time. And so again, I think this is one really cool aspect of the book tracker and one that we worked you know, really hard to get it to work uh, properly for you guys. And last but certainly not least, we have this graph right up here, which just summarizes all of the data, all of the BSRs of the books that we have in our tracker. It can get a little bit messy. I won't lie, it can get messy. Uh, it, once you add like, you know, a huge list of books in your tracker. And for that reason, we made this kind of, we made each of these, uh, each of these lines kind of editable. So basically you're not interested in this book, just remove it and book tracker will remember that you clicked it, uh, you kind of removed it from, you know, the summary graph there at the top. And you can just kind of be keeping track of the, only the books that you are interested in right here at the top. So guys, that is the book tracker and all that it can uh, do for you, save you time and give you insights that you probably otherwise would not have um, gained. There's already plenty of things that I have in my mind that we uh, would like to build on top of it uh, in the near future. And those of you guys who are ready to join BookBeam, who are ready to sign up, those of you guys who will become users, you will have the power to, you know, give us suggestions, give us feedback, tell us what you think, tell us, you know, what you think we should add. And based on that, we will also navigate kind of the next priorities of where to, of what to build next, of what to fix, if there is anything to fix. That is, you know, kind of a, a voting power that the users uh, will have. All right, guys, I will meet you in one of the next uh, BookBeam tool showcase videos. Until then, bye-bye.